So without any further ado, it is four o'clock central time. Again, welcome to uh, this Capstone Connect webinar uh, featuring Shannon McClintock Miller. Um, in today's webinar, we'll be looking at uh, creating engaging learning experiences this spring and summer. Um, so uh, Shannon, if you wanna introduce yourself, I would love to. Um, my name is Shannon McClintock Miller. I am the district teacher, librarian, and innovation director at Van Meter Community School in Iowa. And I also serve as the Future Ready Librarian spokesperson and on the national faculty for Future Ready Schools. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Shannon M. Miller. And I also blog at The Library Voice. Shannon's just got a little bit going on. <laughs> um, my name is Brian Schmidt. I am the EdTech Marketing Manager. So I have the privilege of getting to uh, connect with customers and really help um, be the voice internally when it comes to our different uh, technology products. So things like Pebble Go, um, Capstone Interactive eBooks, and then our newest platform and the one we're going to discuss today is Capstone Connect. Um, and you can always uh, connect with us. In fact, I respond to the vast majority of uh, communication on Twitter at Capstone Pub. So um, just to make sure I get the, the details out of the way, but these are some of the most fun details to be fair to. Um, again, if you were here early on, um, I had said, ask us anything. Um, really, this is a two-way street and it's not just um, a say in it. We want to um, customize this and give you guys the information that's gonna be most useful. So ask away, whether it's in, the Q&A area or the chat, um, we will do our best to respond to everything that comes our way. Um, the webinar is being recorded. So I can like to tell people, you don't have to worry about uh, scrambling to keep up with Shannon as she's going through the projects. It'll all be recorded. Um, additionally, uh, we'll be emailing out along with the recording, uh, the slides so you can view those as well. Many which will have the links to the different templates and resources that Shannon mentions. And then join the conversation. Um, if you've noticed lately on Twitter um, or Facebook or Instagram, we've had a lot of good conversation. Um, use the hashtag Capstone Connect. Um, it's a good thing to search as well. I don't know how many of you search Twitter or TweetDeck, um, but even just searching uh, Capstone Connect or Pebble Go, you're going to find a lot of inspirational posts or uh, updates from us here at Capstone. Um, so highly recommend uh, checking that out as well. So brief introductions uh, we just got done with. Um, next, we'll be taking a look at what is Capstone Connect. So again, I know a number of you this may be uh, familiar, but for any of you who are new, uh, we always wanna make sure to take the time and uh, explain what it is that uh, is kind of the basis of a lot of Shannon's awesome uh, activities and learning experiences she's gonna share. And then we'll jump into the meat of it, which is the eight spring and summer ideas. And then we'll have time at the end for questions. So before we uh, get too far in, there is a video I'll be playing. Take about a minute and a half, and then I'll be right back with you. You're a teacher. You spend hours every week finding resources for your students. The right resources. You gather it. You send it. They click it and get an error, or have to create yet another login and password. They get frustrated. Their caregivers get frustrated. And you get frustrated. There is an easier way. Introducing Capstone Connect, your one-stop content hub, where you can quickly and easily search and share educationally appropriate, highly engaging Capstone content. Capstone Connect gives you instant access to Pebble Go, Pebble Go Next, Pebble Go Spanish, Pebble Go Read More, Capstone Interactive's collection of eBooks with read aloud audio, and hundreds of other digital learning resources designed for use by both teachers and students. With Capstone Connect, you have thousands of content pieces that are matched to state and national standards right at your fingertips. No matter what ed tech tool you're using, you can give your students direct access to Capstone Connect's content with just a few clicks. Here's how it works. 
Once you've signed into your Pebble Go account, simply click the Capstone drop-down menu and select Search. Here you can search by either state and national standards or by title and get instant results, which you can organize by type and also preview each item to find the exact content you're looking for. Then just copy the link and directly add it to any EdTech platform to give your students one-click access. No new logins or passwords required. <gasps> Connecting your students to great resources has never been easier with Capstone Connect. Go to capstoneconnect.com and click Request More Information to be contacted by your local Capstone representative. So hopefully uh, that video was a good foundation to be able to uh, start the next part of the conversation for you. What is Capstone Connect? Um, really, it's two pieces, I'd say. Um, the first is the content. Um, at the core of it is Pebble Go. Um, the entire suite is available through there. So it includes Pebble Go, the K through uh, two uh, resources, um, Pebble Go Next, the uh, nonfiction articles for your third through fifth graders, uh, Pebble Go Spanish, which takes that Pebble Go content and provides it in uh, Spanish, and then Pebble Go Read More, which is eBooks right within Pebble Go platform uh, tied to animals and science. Um, but what we've done is taken that Pebble Go experience, which is um, in about one out of every four schools across the country already, um, and coupled it with ebook bundles. Um, and so thousands of ebooks are added to that Pebble Go package, and that's what really makes Connect um, from a content standpoint. So it's nonfiction and fiction titles, um, a lot of which, if not most, have curriculum connection. Um, so that's the one component. The other piece of connection or of connect that makes it super powerful is the ability to search for that content and then share it. Um, so in that second part of the video, you saw um, how easy it was to search for content um, by like, keywords or the one that we didn't show only because it's a little more robust um, and uh, nuanced as you go through there, but is you can search by uh, state standards or national standards like NGSS, or if you are a state that uses Common Core, um, all those standards have been mapped to the content as well. Um, so really robust search tool that then once you find the content with a click of a button, you copy that content and you can share it with students. And the best part is they don't even have to worry about a separate username or password um, to log in. It literally takes them right to the content. So um, super exciting stuff, super powerful stuff. Um, but the reason we're here today is as soon as you see um, all the ways that Capstone Connect can enable and empower uh, teachers and students, um, I think that's where the real power lies. It's a great tool, no doubt. Um, but as Shannon's going to show here, um, it's what you can do with such a tool that makes it um, so incredible. So without any further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Shannon um, and she will walk you through. Okay, I'm just going to share my screen. Can you see my screen? Sure can. Cool. Okay, so I always love that video, Brian. It's so good and really captures how easy it is to use Capstone Connect and just how excited we are at our school to use it. It has been so helpful, not only as we plan things within our classroom and for our remote learners, but also it's just a really great tool for collaboration too, which I really appreciate. And I'm gonna talk about eight creative spring and summer learning experiences using Capstone Connect. And I wanted to, before I start, just share a couple of things around choice boards and also the Pebble Go calendars, because really a lot of what we have been doing in our school this year and how we have been teaching and sharing resources has been using choice boards. And I was telling Vanessa and Brian before we started, like so many things have been like this huge aha this year, like 
why didn't I ever think about that before? Like it was, it was so good to be able to share things, you know, if we were using Seesaw or Google Classroom, but now we have these other places that we're all creating. And I think that's the power too behind Capstone Connect is it's just one more thing that is making us better teachers and better librarians as well. And so with our monthly choice boards, I have been putting them together over all kinds of um, either like the monthly ones or special themes that we have. And they include, you know, so many different things around making and around celebrations and coding and technology. And of course, literacy is a giant part of them. And I think like for me, as I am planning with my teachers, just thinking about how I can support the curriculum, how I can support our kids the best that we can, and making sure that we have these resources that sometimes maybe would be forgotten or not seen or not utilized as much. And so when we put these together on something like a choice board and we're sharing it in Google Classroom or Seesaw or Symbol, however we're sharing it out, we're really making sure that we're using all these resources as well. And so for me, it's been just a really great tool, not only to share as a librarian, but also just that collaboration that we do as teachers together. And it's nice because, you know, it's a good tie in for our classroom teachers, but also when we're collaborating with our related arts teachers, when we're supporting our kids, even their own interests and their own voice but really listening to what our kids need. Another thing that is so helpful are the Pebble Go calendars. And these are something that I love looking at what is shared on Twitter by Pebble Go every day, because there's always like fun little things that they would point to, you know, like on the 1st of March, it was National Pig Day. And there is an article and just kind of a fun reminder also, just as a, you know, adult, it's fun to see these things as well. So I really appreciate these calendars because I think that kids and teachers and all of us like to learn these things too. So on the promotional content page on Pebble Go, I wanted to point to these. I asked Brian where these were today because I wanted to make sure that I shared a link to this. And so all of the slides, you'll get them and we're gonna make a resource page too that point to all of these resources. So you'll be able to get to these, you'll be able to um, click on them and use them and print them off for your own use too. So promotional content on Pebble Go is where we find these. Now, another great thing, we're gonna kick it off with Women's History Month, number one. And Pebble Go, they have done this for the last several years, the Discover Great Women from History. And they have the special during the month of March. I think it started like around February 22nd where you can sign up and you can get all of the biographies in Pebble Go and Pebble Go Next around women. And, and it's great because it gives kids a chance, you know, to check these out and learn more about great women in history. But also Capstone has put together amazing resources, posters and sheets that you can print off and lesson ideas. And I love this because I can tie it in again to what we're learning and how we're celebrating just the accomplishments of amazing women, but also creating something like a choice board so kids can go there and they can learn about these women in Pebble Go and Pebble Go Next, but then also take the Women's History Month Pebble Go quiz, which they love to do. They love to see um, what happens. Now, one thing that I'm really excited about this year is we have came together, come together with Buncey, and I did some collaboration with my friends at Buncey, and we put together these amazing templates. And if you have never used Buncey before, Buncey is a digital storytelling tool, um, digital tool that you can create so many things things from, you know, research to posters, to bookmarks, to invitations, but the learning that takes place when we use Buncee together with Pebble Go is just amazing. And within Buncee, you can find all kinds of templates around Women's History Month. And I really love this idea, the most likely to be in a Pebble Go biography. And it could be a story about someone that maybe kids look up to, maybe it's somebody that is an athlete 
or an actress or an astronaut, anything that they would like to focus on, but maybe it would also be, you know, we had one little girl that she said, what about just having it be about us? You know, like, why would I be in Pebble Go? There's also templates that can be used for a research journal. And so when they are researching those women that are in Pebble Go and Pebble Go Next, they can use these templates and they can write about all of the famous women and have it be a journal that they use and they go back to. And within Buncee, it's great because you can tie in anything from images to your voice to a video. They can add text and stickers that are within Buncee to really make it, you know, an interactive digital story, something that they are so proud of every time that they create within Buncee, but really tying in that information that they find too, that is in PebbleGo. And so we use this a lot for different projects where we're using PebbleGo and our kids even have their own Buncee journals for PebbleGo every year. And they just love being able to use those even for things that they find that they're interested in. And so when we look at all the stickers, they have just dozens and dozens of stickers too that tie into Women's History Month. And I love these. They've added so many more just the last few weeks, even that our kids will just really love to use in this project. And, you know, finding things that tie into Pebble Go, but also look for the templates that are for Women's History Month. And this one is one of my new favorites. I just absolutely love it. Now, Buncee also has a great place just to find ideas. And so if Buncee is new to you, or maybe you're planning with your teachers or you're looking for ideas that you might um, be curious about how to use it, you can go to the Buncee Ideas Lab and you can find then projects that are focused around like certain themes or curriculum, um, certain events every year. And it's nice because you can see what is included, for example, like in this Women History Month research project, but then you also can click on create this to make a copy. And then it makes it really easy to be able to use that and share it then with your kids. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time. You can use all these great things that the designers and teachers and librarians so many people have contributed to the Ideas Lab to make it just an amazing, amazing place to go for looking for ideas. And I also just wanted to include to a link that will go back to the Discover Great Women from History and Pebble Go, where you can sign up and you can also find the resources that are around Women's History Month that I mentioned in this too. Number two is St. Patrick's Day. We have St. Patrick's Day coming up on March 17th, and there is a great article in Pebble Go, and I use this as part of our choice board. And so in our choice board, the kids can click there and they can learn more about St. Patrick's Day, but also do other activities. If it's drawing or playing a game, they can find information or watch a video from other places. And it makes it really fun just to be able to tie in some of those special cultural events too. An activity that we did today is with Stick Together. And if you have never heard of Stick Together before, these are the giant sticker boards that kids use just hundreds of stickers to create a sticker board together. And the big thing about it is the collaboration because they're all working together. Well, Stick Together, they had a solution to kids not being together, being able to be at the poster at one time when they placed the stickers. They created virtual sticker stick together boards this year. And so my kids, they have been creating artwork this week and stick together. They are taking kids artwork and turning it into virtual sticker boards. And so this is one of our second graders and he did a little leprechaun and I sent it to stick together and they made it into a sticker board. And this is kind of what a sticker board looks like in stick together, the virtual ones. And you can see at the top, they have almost 4,000 stickers that they have to stick on there. And the kids did it today. They had such a great time to create then that artwork that was created by another one of our second graders. And so that is a really fun one for St. Patrick's Day. 
If you are new to the virtual stick togethers, um, your first one is free. So I included a link here that you can sign up and you can get one for free. This is another great thing to share with your teachers because they would love to do this. So you can share it and tell them, you know, sign up, you get your first one for free and they are very inexpensive. The more that you get, the cheaper that they are. And they're just a wonderful thing. The kids love to be able to collaborate on those. Number three is around the You've Been Virtually Booked that we do. And we do these around different topics. We do it around monthly events that we have. And it all started last year when we were told that we were all going to be learning at home. And we do a giant like you've been book program all throughout the year with real books, with print books, and we put them in bags and we share them around the classrooms. And I was so disappointed that we couldn't continue that. And so I went to our books that we have in Capstone Interactive and now that we have in Capstone Connect and I looked for them around either different themes or even just like new exciting books that I wanted my kids to read. And I used Buncee to create these choice boards that the kids could click on and they could then read the books. It would go straight to their capstone to be able to open up and read them. And it's really easy to do this with Capstone Connect because we can get those direct links and then they click on them and it opens up either in Buncee or in Google Slides. And within Buncee in the ideas lab, and I'll show this to you in a couple slides, you can even get the template. So you don't have to, again, like reinvent the wheel. You can use this as a template and then fill in your own books. And so I just take a little picture of the book cover. I then upload the images into this template. And then I link those just like I would either in a Buncee or even like I did here within the Google Slides. So when they click on that, it takes them right into that ebook and I get those links then from, um, from Capstone Connect. So it's really great because it's a good way, you know, not only to get books into the hands of our kids if they're in their classroom or if they're at home learning or in the library, but also it's really nice because I can get more books into the hands of kids. And so books that maybe they would never see, books that maybe around like the March when we had things around spring and I looked for things since it was read across America. And it's really nice because then they can learn a little bit, but also just celebrating, you know, how we have been virtually booked. The kids love to say that because it's a great way for them just to get more books that they're reading in their classroom or at home too. So in Ideas Lab, um, as I said, you can find those templates. And one thing that I did, there's another template in here on how to make a newsletter. And what I would do throughout the summer and even last spring is I would take then that virtually booked board and I would just take a little screenshot, put it in then as an image into my Buncee. And then they were able to watch the video and learn a little bit more about that week's you've been booked. And so that was a fun way, even just to tell the kids how they used it and families how to use it as well. So in Capstone Connect, just to kind of go and see what it looks like when you're looking for these books, I will search a topic. So I love searching for like a certain title or topic or theme. And so like for the, you've been virtually booked for March, I searched up spring and I then found just lots of Pebble Go articles and eBooks and materials around spring, but I can even take that one step further and just search then for the eBooks. And this makes it really easy because I can see then the books for spring, I can grab the link, copy the link. And if I want to view the book, I just have to click on the title like Animals in Spring and I can even view the book in my Capstone Interactive. And so it makes it really easy to be able to see those too. Number four is spring break. We have spring break coming up next week at the Ameter. I'm sure that a lot of you have spring break too this month. And so I have created a new board around spring break time. And I put it together trying to think about things that they could use to relax or create, read, play, 
and then places to visit as well. Just something fun for kids to do because a lot of our kids, if their families are still at home, maybe working from home, or a lot of our kids are going to be, you know, maybe with a grandparent over spring break, I wanted to give them a place that they could go and that they could find some things to learn and just read and to be able to relax together too. Now, one thing that I do is I always make a couple different trace boards. And for me, one thing that is really helpful is adding some of the other choice boards that I'm already making. So for example, under read in this one, you can see that I have put the You've Been Virtually book for March. And so you could make your own board and you could add it then if you wanted to go even to like eBooks or even like Pebble Go links that you might have. And then you can just add that to be specific to your school. So it would work with your kids to go there. And so when they clicked on that, it would take them again into that um, trace board that I made around the You've Been Virtually booked. Another thing is under the visit, I wanted to show you some places that our kids go. One of their favorite things to do this year is to take these virtual field trips. And it's looking a little different this spring because we're coming up on field trips again, or even like spring break time and, you know, we can't go anywhere. And so it's nice for families to be able to even view some of these things themselves. And one that I made this year that has been just so fun and I keep adding to this when I find things is the let's take a trip around the world Buncy. And when they click on this, you can see the little link in the corner in the right hand corner of the different tickets and you click on that and it will take you then to these different places that are around the world. If it is Google Earth, if it is, if you haven't seen Hopper the Explorer, you have to go there and check it out. Um, all kinds of places, you know, around the United States and even around the world. And one project that we did that we encompassed um, Pebble Go, our capstone ebooks that we have, and I use Connect for all of this. And I made a place that they were not only going to research and learn about the different continents and all of the things included, but they took this then and they took all of the things that they had learned or either talked about or written down or even used like a Google Doc to record some of this. And they then went into Buncey and we worked with Buncey to create these virtual travel journals. And it's nice because in Buncey, you can have even a Buncey board where kids can then add their own Bunsies to these boards. And it makes it so well organized, but also just a great place for kids then to view what other people have made. So maybe they made one about Asia, but they wanna see what their friends did around Europe or around um, South America, whatever it might be. And it's neat because when they go in, they look very similar, but then they were able to take that content that they had gathered and also just take the things that maybe they loved about that place and use these great pages that Buncey made to then write down like and to record the information. And I love this because I looked at this, I was looking at this last night and I just think it's so cute on Berkeley's opinion page on what she liked. And she said, ramen is good, sushi is good. And so it's not just the information that they find also in like Pebble Go are the capstone eBooks, but also just putting their own twist on it and their own flair, I think is so important for kids too. Number five is National Crayon Day. And this is coming up on March 31st. And again, I put together a choice board and included a Pebble Go article around art. And I went back into my Capstone Connect and I searched for color was what I searched for, for the title. And it came up with eBooks and Pebble Go articles. And it was great because I was able then to take some of those things around color and around art and then add them to our crayon day board. And so when I add something to either a Buncey or into a Google slide, you add that image and you grab the link. I'm going to show you right here from copy link. And so I've copied that link. And then I go into my choice board 
click on whatever image I want to link to that. And then I add the link, just paste it in there and click on apply. And then when they click on that article, it will take it, them right to that. The same with a ebook. With an ebook, you just would click on copy link. It will turn to orange so you know that you've copied it. And then just again, click on that image and add your link to it. So it makes it really, really easy to be able to do. Now, a couple of things that we're gonna do around National Crayon Day. One thing is just collecting used crayons. And even though we use tons of technology at the Meter. I want my kids to also do things just with their hands. And I think that being creative is just so important, especially in this world that we live in when we have so much technology. And so any project that is like STEM-based and art-based, I absolutely love doing and really encourage the teachers on how we can be innovative. And this one, you know, for National Crayon Day is so simple because everybody has used crayons at home. So I made this little graphic and then I shared it on our social and I made a poster to send home with the kids. And we have been collecting just hundreds and hundreds of crayons. And then the kids have been creating the most amazing things. Um, towns, they've been creating characters. They've been creating mosaics and letters, just all kinds of things that they can think of to create with these used crayons. And so I think that is something I love that it's the end of March. I love that we only have, you know, a couple months of school left. And so doing some of these projects, I think is so good for our soul and the kid's heart too, just to be creative and collaborative as well. Another fun one is using Tinkercad. And if you've never used Tinkercad before, it is a free like AutoCAD program and we use it for 3D printing, but it also can be used for so many different purposes. It can be used for writing. It could be used to retell something from history and Tinkercad is free for everyone. Um, as a teacher, our librarian, you sign up and then the kids would sign up for your class and then they go in and like our kids all have their own gmail so they would log in with that and they can create so many cool things and like i wish we had minecraft at our school but we don't and so this is something that i think the kids feel like it's kind of like minecraft because they can build and they can be creative and inventive and the other day when we were in tinkercad the kids were creating some scenes I saw that there is now a crayon under the making at home category. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have a huge contest on the week of crayon day where the kids are actually gonna use the crayon to build in Tinkercad. Now, the really neat thing too about this is once they get this built, you can actually use, and I'll show you this in a few slides, you can use the merge um, app called Object Viewer, and they can even upload this and three, see it in 3D. So it is amazing because Tinkercad is free, the Merge Cube, Paper Cube is free as well, and that app. So a great activity to tie in just lots of different technology and so much fun for the kids. And something that's really useful, like a CAD program you know, is what engineers use. And so we talk a lot about STEM careers and things that they might use even in the future. So it makes it really fun. Number six is Earth Day, and this is coming up in April. And again, last year when we were all at home, I used Pebble Go articles and Capstone Interactive books that we had, found them in Capstone Connect. And then I put them links in just like I showed you before into all those eBooks and Pebble Go. Well, one thing that we love using, you know, and I just talked about the um, Merge Cube and the app is when we think about and we study things like geology now or the earth, there are so many different places that you can go in Merge EDU to find things that are virtual and augmented reality around the earth. And so we have at Van Meter, we have Merge EDU, but some of these are actually free that you can use the simulations. And so 
kids can use this paper cube back on this slide. And I put a link in here. You can get this for free now, download it, have the kids make their own cube, and then find some of those free apps if you don't have Merge EDU to be able to learn more about the earth. And our kids and teachers have absolutely loved this this year. And you can even find just lots of great little lessons around it too. Another one is in Flipgrid in Discovery Library. Capstone has a place with lots of different topics. And as I was planning with my teachers the other day for Earth Day, I found one actually on cleaning up our environment. And this is great because you can go into Flipgrid, which is free for everyone. You can find this topic then. And if this is something that you would like to use with your Flipgrid, you just add the topic. You don't have have to do any like reinvention. You can just use it how it is and then use it with your kids too. Number seven is Children's Book Week. And I love Children's Book Week. There's so many fun ways to celebrate. They have just a great site that you can get lots of resources and just kind of bringing some of the things that we have in our collection to the kids. And so if it is having them read, if it's having them maybe listen to some audiobooks, and then of course, creating, they can create their own stories in Buncey. They can create with like Kidlet, um, Ready, Set, Draw. They can make their own book. And I think that one thing that I also really love to always remember kind of along the same lines of, you know, having them create with crayons is that kids just love to create even just their own books with paper or to write in a journal. And our second graders have created the most amazing little Pebble Go books in Mrs. Ferguson's class the last few weeks. And they all got to do whatever topic they wanted and then they're creating a book with a glossary and table of contents and chapters. And so don't forget, you know, also just how much kids like pulling out paper and creating their own books too. Great activity for Children's Book Week as well. And number eight is summer learning. And we have, you know, summer is going to be here before we know it. And so I have started thinking a lot about summer. And last year we did a 12 week virtual camp adventure. And these are focused around a certain theme every week. And then each week there was a choice board filled with places that kids could go. And we had our ebooks and we had um, places that they could do art. We had different virtual field trips, you know, things that they could do outside, STEM activities, cooking, whatever we could think of to put into these weekly activities. We also had, of course, our virtual choice boards um, with just the you've been booked kind of concept of clicking on them and getting to the Capstone eBooks as well. And we're going to be doing this again with Capstone, this partnership, but this week or this year, we're actually going to have it into um, six different weeks, kind of different themes, and we'll be pulling from Capstone Connect. And so you'll be able to use this with your kids too. We'll put it together and we'll share it for everyone to use the virtual camp adventures, but you can still go to last year's. And even though the books now aren't active, if you have them in your collection, you can use them or switch them out. And I have lots of people that have been using these all year long just for the different ideas and activities. And so you can get to all of it on this page, this is just a site set up that you can get to it too. And then really, really soon, we're going to be sharing that virtual camp adventure for the summer that I just shared. And so that will be shared for everyone to sign up and to use as well. Now, just to kind of sum it up and wrap things up on how Capstone Connect is used, there's two ways to search and it's searching by standards or searching the title. And I love it because I can go and I can search my different standards that I might have in Iowa, but also again, that connection that I have to the teachers and being able to help them and collaborate. And for me, really being able to search by title is so helpful because I can search around kind of some of those different themes that we talked about today with spring and summer events and find then the content that I need. I also wanted to share Buncey. I know that there are some questions, I think, even in the chat that I saw about Buncey. So I wanted to share 
just a link and just to tell you a little bit more about how easy it is to use. And it's just an amazing content creation tool. And I love it because when you go in there, let me go back, you can find, you know, so many different ways to be able to use the templates and all of the assets they already have, but then finding those activities too in the ideas lab. And so if you don't use Buncee yet, when you sign up, you get 30 days um, free trial and it is hands down like our favorite resource that we use with Pebble Go and other things within our school. And this is great for, of course, our elementary, but we use it with our middle and high school just as much. And so kids absolutely love that. A few more resources just kind of to around um, the choice boards. One little tip, and I love to share this, this was another like huge aha this year, is I have been creating a lot of posters and a little poster like this, you know, being able to copy it and share it with my kids where they can either scan it with their iPad or their device at school or at home to be able to get to the different choice boards and resources that we use, or even sharing this slide, you know, just sharing the Google slide with the kids in their Google Classroom or Seesaw or putting it on Symbaloo. And all of these little images are clickable and they go to then the resource that is being shared. And so it makes it really handy because then everything that we're doing for that month is in one place. And so we have one tomorrow, we start spring break. We have one just for spring break and just to have the kids a place for them to be able to go to our library resources and that spring choice board is just so helpful for not only our kids, but our families too. And, you know, we share it in different places. And so a lot of times people wonder like, you know, how do you get all these resources to the kids? And you have to be really organized when you're creating and when you're doing projects like this. And so again, you know, sharing in Google Classroom, sharing on our Symbaloo, our little ones you seesaw, and just making sure that we do a good job of just staying organized. And I also wanted to share our gallery that we have just within a Padlet. And these are all the choice boards that I have been putting together. And I thought it would be helpful to share this because then you can go and you can find them whatever you're looking for, whatever uh, event or special kind of event or celebration that you might want to find can be there. And my blog is the library voice where I blog about a lot of these things too. And so if you have a question or you have maybe a resource that you're looking for, you'll be able to go back and even find it on my blog as well. And so hopefully all those things are really helpful to you and you'll be able to take these and do them with your kids and with your teachers. And I hope that you guys have just lots of fun doing some of the things that we've done at Van Meter this year as well. Thank you so much, Shannon. That was awesome. Um, really glad you guys all um, got to uh, just experience uh, the different ways that Caps Can Connect can be used in tandem with some really cool ed tech tools that are out there. Um, as Shannon shared and showed, you know, there's so many different options out there for how you can take this great content, simply put it into this other tool and share it out there with your kids. Um, or, and Shannon can attest to this as well, even if all it is is um, emailing um, them the link to do it, um, it's all possible. Um, but there's some really cool and exciting ways uh, that Shannon and others have just been um, getting in there and uh, figuring out how um, powerful the tool Capstone Connect can be um, in, uh, in tandem. So um, saw some good questions in there. Um, in fact, I see a couple others coming up. Um, Shannon, it looks like there's a question. Um, how can I ever thank you for all of the resources and ideas you share daily? That's the question. How can people thank you, Shannon? <laughs> how can they thank me? You guys just you, you guys just use them. Use them all the time and I I love creating. I am an artist and I love being creative and so this has kind of been like my you know kind of escape for me I think during the pandemic and just being at home is being able to create really cool things so I just love that you guys are using all this stuff yeah and it's exciting too because you know it's been great 
have all these resources uh, with uh, remote learning, hybrid learning. But even as we look towards what next year and the future is going to look like as we're back to some sense of normalcy, these tools are still going to be uh, instrumental and uh, kind of central to what education uh, is. Yeah, so, definitely. Very cool. Well, thank you guys so much. I um, want to give a little uh, preview of what you'll expect um, at this point. Um, tomorrow morning, um, you'll have uh, in your inbox from us uh, uh, thank you email with all the resources I mentioned early on. So uh, there will be a recording of the webinar. So feel free to share that or rewatch it. Um, there will be a uh, copy of the slides with all those links to the resources like Shannon mentioned. Uh, there will be a certificate in there as well for you for um, any professional development needs that this hopefully helps satisfy. Um, and also we'll include a link in there to uh, a one-stop page that'll have all these resources as well. So um, again, thank you so much for joining us. And if you do have any feedback or questions, uh, please reach out to us. Uh, Pebblego.com is a great resource or your uh, Capstone representative or reach out to Shannon or uh, Capstone uh, via social media and we're here for you. So um, we have another exciting uh, webinar coming up next month uh, that I can't wait to share. So stay tuned to the website and social media for that. Um, but thank you again for being here and uh, have a great rest of your day.